how do so back out vlogging missus kicked my butt and told me to get out of the house and get vlogging i've got a vlog every day this week won't be traveling this week to see people although i've got people to interview i love doing that so seven vlogs boom one a day here we go today best lass officer female i ever worked with tomorrow the best lad male officer i ever worked with the following day worst female worst male today's officer female lots of mentions along the way um tomorrow again great officers i work with tough worst female only one contender she was a wrong and her still is still in job um but there you go and the worst male the worst lad yeah i've got to think about that one so today i'm going to set the scene a bit welcome if you're new to the channel um my name's sam just seen stephen he's my black labrador that's with a ph the posh spelling of stephen channel this is me out vlogging and interviewing people mental health and the criminal justice system and anything else meeting a lot of people who have life stories never been to prison and the like i enjoy doing it the good thing about having your own youtube channel is you can speak to who you want talk about anything you want and i love it so let me set the scene strange ways infamous prison again some of you are new to the channel I worked there on K-Wing, my first placement for three and a half years from uh, around about April 2005. I don't think I can limbo, just let me have a go. <laughs> yep. Ah, 60th fast approaching, although I don't feel 60. So I worked on there from about April 2005 to November the 21st. 2008 uh, mid shall we say what what hold on just let me stop oh yeah all having a good bank holiday uh, midterm I'm gonna call it we got a change of PO principal officer been a while since I've dead this prison officer in the UK then you get a senior officer wing manager principal officer or now they're called a CM or whatever, they would be, uh, do the Oscar one duties. Um, they're next to the governor, next rank. So we got a new PO principal officer. Um, I got on with him at first, first eight months maybe. He changed everything. Um, it went downhill when he asked me what I thought about his changes. I told him he was shite. Uh, until we made the job way worse. I told him I thought as a new manager he should have seen how the staff worked and wing worked before making major changes. Boom, our relationship dipped. At loggerheads, so me an officer, senior officer, principal officer, we're at loggerheads, yeah. I got under his skin, but I always did my job, couldn't knock or fault me in doing my job as an officer. People became aware of the situation. Governor, over implementation. They decide where people work in the jail, amongst other things. Um, asked me to go on healthcare. I weren't getting on with a PO. Prison healthcare is the hospital wing. So he asked me to go on there. Uh, I went back to my colleagues who I got on with. Some who'd already left the wing, K-Wing because they didn't get on with a PO either. That says something, doesn't it? Told them I'd been asked to go on healthcare and everyone went, no way, keep well away. Keep well away, yeah? I had a feeling myself, <laughs> I weren't gonna enjoy it, but you know, <laughs> you know what? It's a challenge, isn't it? So I did a few overtime shifts on there. Uh, odd place to work. They had six managers and a manager above them and two managers above them. Yeah, that's nine managers. It was a small place to work. Uh, they had three prison managers, senior officers, three nurse managers, uh, a senior nurse manager above them, and then two POs, a healthcare PO 
and a prison PO. It's a lot of managers, isn't there? On any one given day, you might have three nurse managers and three prison managers and the senior manager and a PO on. So that's eight managers with one of them in charge. Chaotic. Then we mentioned the staff on healthcare. Um, people might say I'm strange, maybe, but they were strange. Strange place to work. And it was run like a segregation. For those that are new to the channel, don't know what a segregation is, solitary confinement. So I'm talking about a hospital wing. The majority of people were mentally unwell. We had some people who were physically unwell and it was run like solitary like a punishment block. Anyway, we're talking about the best last female officer I ever worked with. She was working on there. She was one of the reasons, yeah, that people told me not to go on there. I needed to watch my back. I was moving from K-Wing where people had had my back. There was an investigation in my last eight months on K-Wing. A senior officer got moved off. Because he was a thug. He was a fucking thug, end of. He was punching fuck out of people for no good reason in front of new staff. I challenged that. Uh, the prison as a whole didn't like that. Everyone turned their back on me. But I had support on K-Wing from staff who knew what was going on. So, uh, this senior officer's girlfriend I had friends on healthcare, so she had a toddle over, told them I was a bully, told them I hated women. Um, as is often the case, people took that at face value. So my first six or 12 months on there were awkward. You could feel the awkwardness as well. People were uneasy around me. Um, lots of gossip and the like. And, <laughs> and the best last, best female officer I ever worked with fucking hated me yeah we had a lot of conflict at that time my first 12 months on healthcare she'd been my top five worst officers ever <laughs> there you go a name miss walters you know i'm not talking about her in a bad way so i'm going to use a real name she's still in a job now um here's what happens People listen to gossip, you gain all walks of life. However, prison service in that small environment didn't go down well. Now, the first two years I was on there, um, I had a lot of conflict, a lot of conflict with managers, the PO, a lot of conflict with him, and a lot of conflict with Miss Walters. Um, round about the 12 month mark, uh, somebody said something very unkind about her, but not me. She came storming in the office. I was at the desk, it's nursing staff. Basically asked them to clear the room, slammed the door and giving me both barrels. Boom! You effing, 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 effing. Maybe a few C words in there. So I sat there. Everyone's outside listening, seeing for a reaction. Yeah, I'm watching you. I'm watching you, lad. I let her finish. I says, can I say my bit? She went, yeah. Went, see the lad stood outside. There was a lad stood outside. Yeah. He said it, not me. Bam. She just looked, didn't know what to say. Took the wind out of her sails. I told her to go fuck off. And uh, to get the facts right in future. At the two year mark, most of the staff had gone. We were down to a few staff, so I worked with her a lot. Here's the thing about her. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the reason I was warned about her. Um, she said it how it was. She was from Sheffield. Uh, Chapel Town, Sheffield. Said it as it was, and people don't like that in a prison service. Uh, she would argue with me. Even when we got on, she would argue with nurse managers. She would argue with prison managers and prison governors. And if she thought she would right, she would stand the ground. Me, I like that, me. That was a quality. And, um, <laughs> again, <laughs> this is my all time favorite female prison officer to work with. She was a bitch, yeah? She was a proper bitch. But again, 
<laughs> this is advice I've given to every single prison officer who's messaged me, you know, thinking about going into the job. Be yourself. And she was always true to that. She was always herself. You know exactly what you were getting. Um, she did cause conflict, but her heart were in the right place. Here's the other thing about her. Me and her, we, we'd only, most of the time on the healthcare, have two prison officers. No prison manager. They did away with them. It was a fucking dangerous place to work. It really was. Uh, we always had a cat A on there. So it was like a cat A unit. Um, worked with some horrible ones, you know, like Mark Bridger, Jonathan Vass. I've, I've done vlogs about them guys. Fucking horrible bastards really are. Um, just let me watch the dog because we've got some uh, horse manure here. Yeah, moving swiftly on, Stephen. Go on. So me and her worked, come on. Come on then. We worked a lot together. Uh, keep moving. Keep walking. Ah, ah, go on. Keep walking. Sorry about that, guys. We worked together a lot. Um, almost had a sixth sense. Yeah, we get on shift. If any paperwork needed doing, she'd be in the office, she'd get it done. I'd get on with other stuff, we'd crack on. If we had people, which we always had, on unlock protocol, so what I'm talking about now, I'm talking about prisons who were fucking dangerous and there were plenty of them. They might be on a three officer unlock. You know, we'd have three or four of them at any one time. I've just told you there's only me and her, two of us. Yeah, so if an officer come on to the healthcare, might be bringing something on, a governor might be doing a visit. Can I borrow your gov? Because the governor's a prison officer. And we'd get that person, three officer unlock. Listen, lad, I can put you on exercise now. Uh, you might get 20 minutes, you might get two hours. Yeah, there's only two of us. I borrowed a governor, we'll put you out there. When somebody else comes on, we'll put you back in. How's that? Yeah, bam. And away we go. And we would get other prisoners out on association at the same time. Multitasking. She was good. Her fucking work ethics was second to none. Second to none. She grafted, very good at a job, very good with paperwork. And <laughs> again, it's not, <laughs> it's not a prerequisite of the job, but she got balls. Yeah, she got a lot of bottle. Everyone thinks, you know, you see it all the time, that every prison officer has got bottle. They haven't. Yeah, some of them have got no bottle. In tough times, it shows. Uh, it's nothing to do with the fact that uh, they stopped employing from the army. I, I worked with a lot of squaddies. The best officer I'm talking about tomorrow was the next squaddie. One of the best lads, another lad I worked with, was an ex squad A. No problem with that. But not all squaddies were good officers. Nothing guarantees someone being a good officer. Being in the army doesn't mean you're going to be a good officer. Yeah? Hear what I'm saying? It's a different job. Totally different job to anything else. She got balls. Uh, whilst I was on the healthcare, it was a safe place. One of my best mates, KK. Yeah, she's left now. She's a proper nurse. She didn't like me at first either. She said, first six months on healthcare, maybe 12 months, she hated me. Didn't like me. Uh, stubborn, RC Yorkshire twat. That's what she said I was, and I was. You know, I was always myself. If I thought something were wrong, I'd do that. I caused a lot of conflict. Um, however, uh, she did grow to love me. And she always said, she always, always, no matter who we had on that unit, felt safe when I was on there. Yeah, and very few serious incidents. Again, during my seven years on there, it was well managed that unit with not a lot of staff. Um, so Miss Walters, yeah, she got balls. Uh, we ended up in quite a few restraints. Uh, she got hurt that last. You know, she was what, uh, maybe five foot six. I don't know, maybe eight, eight, eight stone, nine stone. I know you shouldn't talk about a lady's weight. I'm just giving you an idea so you can picture, yeah? When we knew we were going into battle, because she was quite astute, she'd take her glasses off. Yeah, she got hurt, that lass. Uh, I know I'm a big lad, but some of the people we dealt with on there, powerful, you know, mental illness and that, they know no bounds, they don't, they don't feel pain, uh, you know, they go on and on and on. And if we'd get any restraint, two or three of us, if we had a third officer on there, yeah, a good two minutes to healthcare before the troops would arrive because people were going through electronic gates. Two minutes when you're trying to deal with someone who 
is as strong as Superman and kicking off is a long time. She got hurt, yeah, but she was always there. Uh, she would get upset. If we had to speak to someone, someone were kicking off, we had to go in a cell in a serious situation. She'd set off down the landing at a pace to go in first, yeah. I were having none of that. That's nothing to do with being a chauvinist or anything else. It's how we're brought up to protect women. You know, if we had to go in a cell and we couldn't wait for other staff, you know, life-saving situations, which there were a plenty, I would go in first, I would push her out of the way. Not again, in a bad way, yeah. And she used to get upset about that. Um, so Miss Walters, yeah. Uh, she claims number one spot because I worked with her a long time. She claims number one spot despite us not getting on for a good 12 months. She gets number one spot despite being a bitch. Uh, she got balls, she remained true to herself and she always said it how it was, which I really appreciated. There's nothing like being forthright. She was a good one and I enjoyed working with her. Um, I did enjoy my time. Eventually she would get moved off. Uh, I don't know why they should have left her on there. She was good at that job. But yeah, she's the number one. Like I say, lots of honorable mentions. I come across some great staff, but I just probably didn't work alongside them as much. Honorable mention, Miss Dennison D-Wing. A lot of lads used to lock up. You know, K-Wing was like Beirut. D-Wing was an extension of Beirut. You know, a lot of remand prisoners, chaotic, the prisoners nobody else wanted in the prison. They'd always like end up back on K-Wing or D-Wing. Yeah, Miss Dennison, a lot like Miss Walters, said it as it were, got balls, as it were, and always true to herself. And again, you know, as I'm thinking now, lots of incidents where lasses, you know, de-escalated or come in and said the right things and probably stopped riot type situations. Uh, I'm going to mention a couple. Uh, Lisa, can't remember a second name. In the private sector. In the private sector, there's two of you on a wing. I worked with this lass a lot. She was a pretty thing, jockey weight, five foot five, seven stone, wet through. Yeah, uh, she was a lesbian. The reason I'm mentioning that, it was quite obvious uh, to a lot of people, including the prisoners. And they would take the piss or try and take the piss, you know, and she would put them down. For a young lass, 21, no presence like me, she would hold her own and she would put them down. But here's the other thing, she's another one who got balls. I remember two lads assaulting me. I could have got a right kick in me. I've got a towel around my neck, being pulled back, a lad here, yeah, trying to punch fuck out of me. She, she weren't dragging him off me, yeah. What she did, she wrapped, wrapped herself around that lad's legs, yeah. Uh, definitely put him off balance, uh, saved my bait until the troops arrived. I remember the next day, she turned in work, me and her were on shift again. The next day, early shift, black and blue, head to toe, never moaned, not once. Yeah? Miss Lowe, another good in. B2, again in the private sector, riot situation, 30 cons, all stood up, really arse twitching stuff, looked like it was proper gonna go off. Yeah? I saw the staff running on, it was dinner time. So there's quite a few staff about, yeah? As they run on, you could see them, oh fuck, yeah? They run on and slowed down. You could feel the tension. She walked on, straight over to the servery. That's where you get your meals. She picked up a list, yeah? Do you want your fucking dinner? Yeah? So it's tense. Do you want your fucking dinner? Oh, you, do you want your dinner? Bam, lad, uh, yes, miss. Yeah, and it started and bam, it come down a level. Yeah, lads suddenly become aware it was dinner time, wanted the scram, just brought it down a notch. Yeah, another ballsy, ballsy lass. So lots of honourable mentions, Miss Walters, cracking officer. She might be a different officer now in a different area. Yeah, people might not like her. I don't care. I worked with her for a long time. She was a cracking officer, one of the best officers I ever worked with. <laughs> <laughs> Despite being a bitch for the first 12 months. Stephen, see your fogging all week. Back on it, guys. There you go, lad. Come on. Beautiful up here today. It's a bit cooler. That's why I brought him up for a walk. Uh, thanks to everyone who supported me on Patreon. Thanks to everyone who's bought me a brew. Hope you're all having the best day possible. I'll see you.